Before you start Lesson 9, make sure you complete Test B in the Test Masters, and you've done this one several times now, so just make sure that you can get 100 on those problems, and once you get 100, keep doing them and just try to improve the time that it takes you to complete those problems. In Lesson 9, we'll be covering some things about fractions. We'll be looking at adding, subtracting, multiplying fractions, and then we'll talk about something called a reciprocal. There's just some basic rules to remember when you're adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions, and we'll just write those down real briefly. When you're adding fractions that have common or the same denominators, the first thing that you do is add the numerators and then write your answer over the same denominators. So as an example, let's say you had these two mixed numbers, 1 and 1 fifth plus 12 and 2 fifths. I had one third there. I meant to say one fifth. One and one fifth plus twelve and two fifths. Well, what you do with mixed numbers like that is you add the whole number parts first. Just add the one and the twelve, so that'd be thirteen. And then the mixed number parts, they have common denominators, so you do the steps that we have here. Add the numerators, one and two is three. Write the answer over the same denominator, five. Thirteen and three fifths is the answer. This is when you have common denominators or the same denominators already. The first step in adding those fractions is to add the numerators together. Then you write the answer over the same denominator. Similar steps apply to subtracting fractions that have common denominators. Like if you had three-fifths minus one-fifth. First thing that you do is subtract the numerators, three minus one is to write the answer over the same denominator, 5. So 2 fifths is the answer there. Multiplication has a different process. You multiply all of the numerators and then you multiply all the denominators together and then write your result. Like if you had 1 half times, a dot can represent a time symbol just like an X can represent a time symbol. So we're saying one-half times one-half, and then let's do that times three-sevenths. And what you would do on a problem like that is multiply all the numerators. One times one times three. That equals three. Multiply all of the denominators. Two times two times seven would be 28. Three over 28. Now, adding and subtracting fractions, that's kind of easy to think about, like three-fifths minus one-fifth. You could think of a fraction circle that had three of the five portions shaded, and you erased the shading on one of those, three-fifths minus one-fifth, that would be two-fifths remain shaded. That's kind of easy to understand, but multiplication, for example, why does half times half equal one-fourth. What are we talking about there? What does that mean? Well, a couple of ways to consider it. Let's just use fraction circles to represent it. We'll just start by talking about half. Now, half times a half. That means we're splitting a half a half of a time. And so that would mean just one-fourth. Another way to think about multiplication is use the word of instead of a time symbol. Half of half. And that might make it even easier to understand. Half of a half, that would be one-fourth. Because if you started with half and you split that in half, you'd end up with one-fourth. So try to remember these general guidelines when you're adding and subtracting fractions with common denominators and then when you're just multiplying any fractions together you multiply all numerators multiply all denominators the denominators do not have to be the same or don't have to be common in order to multiply two fractions just addition and subtraction that's important on those that the denominators are the same let's go ahead and do some practice problems now why don't you just pause the CD and work all of those and see if you can get them all correct Turn the CD back on, check your answers. On practice problem A, you're just adding the numerators together. 1 and 4 is 5 over 5. That's 5 fifths. 
and that's equal to 1. That's the best way to write that answer, is just 1. When you have the same numerator and denominator, the answer is 1. Just think about it if you're thinking of fraction circles. If you shaded in 5 fifths of the circle, you shaded the entire circle in, or 1 entire circle. On B, you subtract the numerators. 6 minus 2 is 4. You have a, you have a common denominator there. 4 seventh is the answer. On C, multiply all the numerators together. 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. And then multiply all of the denominators. 2 times 4, that's 8 times 5 is 40. Now notice how I put a box around the answer. That distinguishes the answer from the rest of the problem. That's something that you should do as well. So when you're grading it or your parents are grading it, they can tell a little more clearly where your answer is. On D, let's just add those two together. We have mixed numbers there, so we add the whole number parts first. 1 and 4 is 5. And then add the imaginary, or not the imaginary, the fraction parts. 3 eighths and 2 eighths. 3 plus 2 is 5 over 8. I was thinking about a number called an imaginary number. That's what I, you use that in algebra class. You call some types of numbers imaginary numbers. But I didn't mean to confuse you there by using that word. E, 5 6 times 7 ninths. Multiply numerators. That would be 35. Multiply denominators, 54, 35 over 54. F, just subtract 1 third minus 1 third. Subtract the numerators and you get 0 over 3. Anytime you have just 0 in the numerator, that means the answer is 0. You just write it as 0. Now in G and H, you had some percent symbols there to deal with. That doesn't change your answer. You just ignore the percentages and do your addition like you normally would. Add the whole number parts together. So you'd have 42. Add the fractions together. That would be 6 over 8. 42 and 6 eighths percent. Now we'll talk about simplifying fractions in a few lessons from now. but Maybe you already know that 6 over 8, it's better to write that as 3 fourths. So if you want to write that 42 and 3 fourths, you can. But that's not the most important thing in this particular lesson. In this lesson, we're just learning how to add the fractions. In H, you're subtracting fractions there. So subtract the whole number parts. 52 minus 12 would be 40. And then the fraction parts, half minus half, that's equal to 0, so you don't have to change anything. And so just leave it 40%. After you wrote the 40 down, you didn't have anything else to write because you did half minus half is 0. And you don't put 0 halves down. Now let's talk about reciprocals, a special kind of fraction. And let's say you had 2 thirds. The reciprocal of two-thirds, all you do is you just trade places with the numerator and denominator. So we'll just put an R for saying the reciprocal. Two-thirds, the reciprocal of that would be just 3 over 2. So anything, 5 over 8, the reciprocal of that is 8 over 5. You just trade places with the numerator and denominator. One-fourth, the reciprocal of that is 4 over 1, which we could just write as a 4. So to find the reciprocal of a fraction, you just flip it, basically. That's the best way to think about it. Trade places with the numerator and denominator. Now, reciprocals of a number, they have special a special result when you multiply them together. For example, if you did 2 thirds times its reciprocal, 3 halves, Look at what happens. Just do your multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6 over 3 times 2 is 6. You get 6 over 6. Remember what we said earlier? Anytime the numerator and denominator are the same, that equals 1. 
That's always true. When you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, the result equals 1, or the product equals 1. Let's go ahead and do some problems dealing with reciprocals. In i, j, and k, I want you to write the reciprocal of each of those fractions. So i, that would just be 5 halves, j, 6 sevenths. Now k, I said write the reciprocal of each of these fractions, and you're probably thinking, well, 12 isn't a fraction. Think about this, though, and try to remember this. Anytime you have a whole number, you can write it like a fraction by just putting it over 1. 12 over 1, that's the same thing as 12, right? You can always write any number as a fraction by just doing that simple thing, putting it over 1. And so the reciprocal of 12 over 1 is 1 over 12. Now just keep in mind, a lot of these things that you're learning now, you're going to be using them later. So you might be wondering, who cares about reciprocals? They're going to be really important later. And look at practice problem L. This is the kind of situation that you'll be using reciprocals in when you're trying to find a missing value. How could you figure out what L was in that problem? 4 sevenths times L equals 1. Well, just think about what you've been learning. You know that when you multiply a, a number by its reciprocal, that equals 1. So 4 sevenths times its reciprocal should equal 1, right? So that means L would be 7 over 4. And so there's your answer, 7 fourths, because 4 sevenths times 7 fourths equals 1. Look at m. How are you going to figure that one out? 9 times m equals 1. Well, remember what you can do when you have a number that's not a fraction. You can turn it into a fraction by writing it over 1. So really you can just say 9 over 1 times m equals 1, and m should be 1 over 9, right? The reciprocal of 9 over 1. So 1 ninth would be your answer. 9 over 1 times 1 ninth would equal 1. Here's a little bit more complicated problem dealing with reciprocals. The question says, how many 3 fourths are in 1? Well, all you have to do here is, is say the reciprocal for your answer. 4 thirds or you could call that one and one-third, right? Since three-thirds equals one plus another one-third, that would give you four-thirds. So there are one and one-third three-fourths in one. Just think about it. This could represent three-fourths and then this could also represent three-fourths. One of those plus another third of a three-fourths, that would just be breaking it up into three sections, right? Which would all be one-fourth each. So that, that extra one there would fit in right there, right? And you'd end up with an entire complete circle. How many three-fourths are in one? You just figure out the reciprocal of that. And there are one and one-third three-fourths in one. O is another reciprocal kind of problem. If P divided by Q equals six, what does Q divided by P equal? Well, let's just think about this and let's just visualize that. If we had P divided by Q, that's like writing a fraction, P over Q. If that equals six, then it would be six over one, right? So that means Q over P would equal 1 over 6. Q divided by P is equal to 1 over 6. So a reciprocal, all that is, is you take a fraction and you flip it. Remember, any number that's not a fraction, you can always make it look like a fraction by writing it over 1. Also, a number times its reciprocal, that product equals 1. Try to remember those things. Okay, well that's all for lesson 9.